thank you so much for attending this workshop um uh, this will be an introduction to vehicle dynamics using matlab so we are going to look at what uh, will be the outcome of the course so by the end of this workshop you'll get an idea of what we are going to offer in the course and also some basic uh, idea of vehicle dynamics concepts So first, what exactly is vehicle dynamics? So can you just type some words that come to mind when I say vehicle dynamics? It, it, it doesn't have to be sentences, just some words. You can just type words in the chat box. Like anything like suspension. So any word that comes to mind. Yes, yeah, stability, that's one. Yes, forces, ride, ride and handling, great. So, rules, yes, yeah. So yeah, here are some of the words that you said. It, there is force, suspension, handling. So the important ones are bigger. So yeah, you've got most of the words there. Now, if we want to group all of these together, I would do it in two, into two categories. So one would be isolation and the other would be control. So isolation deals with you know, isolating the driver from the external disturbance. That comes under ride. So you want, the, um, you want all the external disturbances from road, wind to be isolated. You don't want everything coming into the driver's cabin. And the second thing is control. So here is stability, uh, and then your steering, handling. You want the vehicle to follow a particular path, and you want the vehicle to respond correctly to the driver's commands. We can group all this to isolation and control. So that is essentially vehicle dynamics. Now, yeah, those are, so we're going to look at dynamics in action. So this is essentially vehicle dynamics, right? So we are talking about stability here. We're talking about control, chassis control, stability, and then um, good tires, tire stiffness, <clears throat> coefficient of friction, that sort of stuff. And this is also a different video to look to, you know, summarize vehicle dynamics. So here we're talking about durability and then uh, ride quality and things like uh, clearance, suspension, clearance, suspension, travel, etc. And vehicle dynamics, so beyond ride and handling, we, we're also concerned with safety. So I think somebody said uh, stability and roll stiffness. So here... Uh, this is a test, the ro rollover test, and you can see that this is the vehicle is operating right at the edge of what is physically possible. So this is um, rollover stability. And then sometimes when things are not uh, designed properly, you cannot defeat the laws of physics. So whatever you do, so you see that this is a high CG vehicle, and this is an extreme case of the previous video. So this is also vehicle dynamics, basically. So... Uh, primarily isolation and control, but we can also extend it to, you know, safety and that sort of thing. Now, what exactly do vehicle dynamics engineers do? So here I've classified it into three. So there are multiple ways to do this, but um, say, according to the U.S. industry, we can classify it into three categories. So one is uh, computer-aided engineering. Uh, so here we're talking about uh, the Adams modeling. I think a tool like Adams, it doesn't have to be Adams necessarily, but talking about uh, computer models, analysis and optimization. So in the real world, we cannot, uh, say you want to test uh, roll bars. In the real world, we cannot test 100 different combinations. You cannot you know, swap 100 different combinations of springs and roll bars and go test the vehicle. So here, this is where the CAE comes in. Um, you can test a lot of combinations, even a thousand combinations. You can automate the entire process. Um, but before that, you have to make sure your model is valid. So this validation means uh, you have to correlate your model to some physical testing. Otherwise, you cannot trust what the model is bringing. And it helps giving design design. So even though uh, it may not be the final sign-off, during the initial phases of product design, it helps to set the direction. 
and assist target setting and initial setup for tuning. So from this, you can see that CA is used very early on in the product development phase. So to give direction and then to set targets, that sort of stuff. And right at the opposite side, you'll have physical testing. So this is, is done on the track on the ground. So here uh, we do benchmarks. So we test the competitive vehicles, you know, make measurements, so objective testing and instrumentation. So you put accelerometers, sensors, and uh, uh, acquire data. And that's during the initial stages. And then during the final stages, um, the subjective tuning and science. so always when a vehicle is built, final uh, tuning before production that is done on the proving ground. It's it's not done using a CAE tool. CAE tool can only be direction. Um, the fine tuning is always done uh, through physical testing. And then there's a third discipline that uh, combines both of these. So that would be product development. So development engineers combine. CA analysis, so they talk to the um, CA group and they interfer, interface um, physical test group as well. So here they, um, you know, things apply in traction. So being a uh, suspension and they talk to the shock absorber supplier, they talk to the tire supplier, and they also talk to a lot of manufacturing interaction. So they care things like tolerance and then ease of manufacturing and also cost and weight. So, you know, CAE, we don't care about weight and physical testing also, they don't care about that. So this is more technical, but then uh, product development, it's more like real world engineering, what it takes to get the, you know, get the suspension system out on the factory floor. And some companies here on the right side, so this is familiar. See, these are all famous OEMs. So they are responsible for the vehicle. Um, at the end of it, if the vehicle is good, right? the credit to discredit goes to them. And on the left side, so these companies, you might not have heard of all of these companies. Um, some are suppliers, so they are responsible for specific components, like Bosch does the braking system, the electronic stability control, or ABS, and Continental also does something similar. They do, they have tires as well. And the other companies here, like Pratt & Miller, uh, Idiada, and Roush, so they're all consulting companies. So what they do is they provide technical expertise to OEMs. So they, the OEM might come with a specific problem and they might use a software tool or some hardware testing method to solve that. So they don't have a product of their own, but uh, the advantage of this company, these companies is that you get work on a variety of platforms. So Ricardo, for example, they, uh, they also offer technical consulting. So they, um, they don't have a product as such, but um, they do like diesel engine calibration and transmission calibration, driveline work. So like, any of these companies can go to Ricardo for assistance. Yes, they do some tuning as well. Uh, in Europe, they do a lot of tuning, vehicle dynamics tuning work. And in America, it's mostly powertrain, engine calibration kind of work. And they're also software companies. So M Software makes... Uh, one of the widely used tools in this um, industry. So moving on to the course content, what we'll look at in this course. So here I've divided into four categories. Uh, we have suspension design. That's the main one so here. And we look at each of these in detail. And then there's ride and handling and tire mechanics. And before going to the going into the course content, I'd like to show you this slide. So you should always follow what I call concept centric approach. So we can have, we can teach you multiple number of tools. So we can um, like things like MATLAB, Adams, um, or even CarSim. Uh, and you should just remember they are tools. They're not the end goal. So that means achieving what you want to do in a particular domain. So you should always focus on the domain. So here you can see the, the boxes in yellow. So vehicle dynamics or fluid mechanics, <clears throat> NVHA, FEA. So you learn the con first and then you learn how to visualize it or how to you know apply those concepts in a tool and not the other way around. We don't want to learn atoms. We want to learn dynamics and then learn how to 
you know, event where dynamics using atoms. Because you should remember this box here. So the model, if it's not validated or if you don't know what it's doing, it's called a GIGO system where it's garbage and garbage. So you feed it incorrect information, it will not correct it for you. So it's going to throw out uh, useless information as well. So we have, this is very important. So remember this, uh, not only in this course, but any CAE course that you take, the focus should be on the concept and not on rule. Because it, and also remember the tool is replaceable. So today you become an Adams expert, five years down the line, they may come up with a completely different tool and Adams might become irrelevant. But the physics remains the same, vehicle dynamics will remain the same. So the first section is suspension design. Now the function of the suspension is to isolate the body from road inputs, you know, road disturbances, and also react to the forces. So the tire generates the forces and those forces are reacted by the suspension. So this is what gives you direction and control uh, eventually. And it is very important, the suspension design is important to achieve the ride and handling balance. So you can tune your suspension for good ride or good handling uh, you know, tuning it for the extremes is easy, but finding that balance between ride and handling is very difficult. So as a vehicle dynamics engineer, we should know how to strike that ride and handling balance. And the objective in this section, uh, from a course perspective, the objective is to quantify the geometric and elastic behavior. So this is the kinematics and compliance. So geometric is the kinematic behavior and elastic would be the compliance, the bushings, you know, that sort of stuff. And we want to understand how it reacts to the various forces and moments generated at the tire patch. So we'll be looking at uh, the post for the suspension and we'll be looking at a lot of suspension topologies. You know, there are a lot of uh, wishbone and then MacPherson strut, multi-link, a lot of suspension architectures. We'll be studying the different architectures and comparing them. What are the advantages, disadvantages? of those and then the geometric part which is the suspension and kinematics so here we will learn about instant center and instant axis concepts and the front view instant center and the side view instant center so the instant center defines what's known as a swing arm and if you look at it from the front of the vehicle we can study concepts like roll center height and then camber change which is dynamic camber and looking at it from the side we'll know our uh, wheel recession and anti-dive, anti-lift, anti-squat characteristic. So that's the suspension part. And in steering, we'll be looking at Ackerman and then what sort of properties the kingpin defines and steering geometry error. There are errors usually. So the suspension always, you know, when it goes in compression and down, it traces arcs. Now, different components might trace different arcs and the that difference between the various arcs is known as a steering error. And that causes some effects during handling. Uh, so we'll be studying that. And then the steering ratio. We'll be looking at load transfer. So what happens when you corner, how the forces are reacted by the suspension, what happens when you brake, um, that sort of stuff, and how to control load transfer. So, you know, springs and roll bar, they're all load transfer control devices. Now the load transfer itself cannot be changed because that is dictated by your CG, it's basic physics. So you cannot do that, but you can change the distribution and you can control it to a certain extent. You can control the body motion that occurs due to load transfer. And um, suspension damping, the shock absorber. And then we'll be looking at the elastic part, which is bushings and how the bushings influence vehicle handling behavior. And uh, the suspension load cases and load path study. So here, uh, this will help uh, design suspension comp. So you're, if you're into FEA, so this will, uh, the input to an FEA model, it primarily comes from um, a vehicle dynamics tool like Adams. So define what's known as load cases and abuse load cases. So strength load cases would be something that the suspension sees on a daily basis, like a speed bump, um, you know, braking, cornering, that sort of stuff. And then abuse is when you hit a very severe pothole, severe bump in the road, which uh, sees a lot of forces. So we'll be learning how to uh, study the load path 
you know, how to design the suspension for that sort of severe input. And KNC testing. So whatever we learned so far, the geometric and elastic properties can be quantified using a KNC test rig. So this just, we'll be looking at how the testing is done and some test results, so real world test results and uh, uh, what types of tests they do. And at the end of this section, we're looking at uh, the chassis architectures of some popular vehicles. So different categories. So we'd be looking at some sports cars and an economy car, very cheap car. So how the suspension is designed for a budget vehicle and then some uh, off-road vehicles as well. So what, what's it, then you'll be able to appreciate the difference between a sports car and an off-road vehicle in terms of the suspension architecture. So you'll be able to say, so this says two ball joints. So why do we have two ball joints? What each of the link does? So this is where we tie our concepts to you know real world engineering. Because at the end of the day, we want to, able to identify what each of the link does and what happens if you change the geometry. So we'll be able to do that towards the end. Um, so any questions in the suspension section, we'll be moving on to tires after this. So any questions with the suspension geometry or like if you want to know what will be covered, you can um, use the chat box. Yeah, guys, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, we'll, we'll spend around a minute now uh, to for, for your questions and answering it. So feel free to ask any questions that you have at this point of yeah. time. Uh, yes, so caster and camber adjustments. Uh, we'll be showing the, from a geometry standpoint, we'll be studying that. So as the suspension goes through, so here, if you look at this picture, suspension goes in compression and rebound. We'll be looking at how the camber and caster changes. But the static adjustments, like 0.1 degree, the fine tuning, that we won't be covering here because that's more like subjective during the final stages. Um, so we'll be covering the effect the suspension geometry has on the camber change. And yes, we will compare and contrast suspension geometries. So that's the topology section. So we'll be looking at different architectures and what are the advantages and disadvantages of different architectures, like front and rear suspension. And active suspension, no, there is a plan in the future courses because this self, the basic suspense stuff is a, a lot of content but yeah in the future we will offer um, more electronic stuff so active suspension electronic stability control and then active steering that stuff but not in this course we will not be looking at uh, active systems and uh, yes suspension will be combined with steering we will learn about steering kinematics as well Um, suspension compliance, we'll be looking at bushings um, and what effect the bushing has on handling. Yeah, how to control the overall company, we'll be looking at that. Uh, Adams, we will have a separate course in the future. There'll be some most in the sections actually today, there will be an Adams demo. Um, but on learning how to use Adams, so we, we're in the process of setting up a course and acquiring the, um, you know, a tutor version of the software as well. So in the future, we will definitely have a course, a complete course devoted to Adams. Uh, but no, this course, we will not be teaching Adams, but um, we'll be looking at demos. Uh, that's a very good question from Nishan. So designing a part for abuse load cases, uh, is it sufficient or do we need to do it for strength also? So the design criteria is different for prison strength. So the thing is, if you want to go into more detail quickly, um, for strength load cases, we allow linear deformation. So if you look at our strain curve, we want the product, want the component to be in the linear zone of the stress strain. We don't want any permanent deformation, the strength cases. But an abuse case, like a severe pothole, we can allow some nonlinear or some plastic deformation because it's very clear, right? You cannot um, 
but generally if you if the power survives for abuse load case it will definitely survive for strength load case but um, you cannot design the whole thing for abuse load case because then you'll have to have a very you know high grade material the weight will increase so for abuse we can allow plastic deformation so that's the main difference between those two but uh, yeah in general if your part survive abuse then it will survive the strength loads uh no to, so today's workshop will be just looking at concepts so we won't be into detail any of this this is the introduction so what you will be learning in this course um and then the course goes on for three months and then there will be going into each of these concepts in detail Yeah, um, Kathik, I think uh, you can go ahead. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we will um, go ahead and uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll yeah, yeah. we'll uh, stop for questions after the next couple yeah. of sections. So moving on to tires. So tires, the interesting part here is whatever happens, you know, I told you about the force and moment generation. Um, so all of that happens in this tiny section here. So it's only this is of a human hand. It's called the contact patch. And whatever uh, interaction, all the tire road interaction happens in this small section. So we'll be looking at um, how these forces are transmitted from the road onto the tire and then from the tire into the suspension. So how the tire reacts to... Um, all these forces. And yeah, so that's the goal here. And here we're using a lot of mathematical models, like MATLAB, Octave code, um, because there are a lot of equations. So this is very helpful if you want to do like vehicle dynamics research later on. Uh, so that's why we'll be uh, doing a lot of you know math intensive stuff. Because and tires, there's usually um, you know, a lot of uh, complexity involved. So we have to use some detailed analysis tools over the tire concepts quickly um, we'll be looking at tire structure and nomenclature and the axis system Axis system is very important because um, you can see here that there are a lot of forces and moments involved so getting the signs correct is very very important um, so you have to make sure the forces are acting in the correct direction so that's why we have to define an axis system and stick to it um, so the mix of four generations, so things like rolling resistance, your slip angle, slip ratio, and cornering stiffness. So how stiff the tire is when you're subjected to a lateral force. And there are things like camber thrust, aligning moment. So aligning moment is what gives you um, the steering returnability. So when you corner and when you let go of the steering wheel, you're steering correct, right, automatically. So that is partly due to aligning moment. And... The tire modeling, so the, all of this is MATLAB uh, code. So we'll be looking at a lot of models that capture the tire behavior. And I'll also be showing you one sample code today for the magic tire model. Um, yeah, actually, you can just let's see if I can show you the code now before we move on. So yeah, this is the this is the sort of stuff we'll be doing using MATLAB code. It looks complex now, but we'll be going through line by line. So you'll be able to write a program like this to define the tire behavior. So this is the main equation. Um, this is force versus slip angle. So how the force varies when you change the uh, slip angle. And then we'll be uh, yeah, I won't go too much into the but. Um, the idea is be varying a lot of meters. So you'll be plotting, you'll be plotting something like this. So this is your basic force versus a slip angle characteristic. Now, if you have test data, you want to change the shape of the curve to, you know, just the model and capture the test data. So we'll be varying a lot of parameters, um, five or six different parameters. So all this can be done within um, Octave. You'll be doing things like this. Um, and a lot of this sounds confusing now, but um, we'll be going through, we'll be spending a lot of time on this in the course, so it'll be fairly easy. Uh, 
and moving on to um, here again this is the isolation that we talked about in the so we have the this is the right dynamic system so you have excitation source coming from the road tire wheel imbalance drive line and engine so in this course we won't be going into drive line and engine so that's a different domain but we'll be looking at road roughness and tire wheel uh, disturbances and we'll study how the vehicle responds to this sort of output and how what sort of vibrations result and what that has the driver or passenger so that's the right option and some topics here so here we'll be looking at um, some mathematical ride model so this is the quarter car model the idea is if you capture the behavior of one corner of the vehicle by modeling you know uh, sprung mass sprung mass spray and damper you'll get a good idea of uh, ride behavior and then we can expand that to a half car model or a bondage model so these are all all these models we built in matlab so you'll be writing equations to capture these models and we'll also study some wood surfaces so how to classify the road surface like you can do some analysis you can use techniques like fourier transform and power spectral density to study the quality of the road and uh, here again we'll be looking at suspension and damping uh, because shock absorber pl plays a very important role in ride um and also the performance evaluation and trade so earlier i was talking about the ride and handling balance so we'll be covering things like that so what happens to you know there are conflicting parameters and how to balance the different things by you know choosing um a particular rung mass weight a particular shock absorber setting so we'll be learning about that and handling so handling is the controls part then isolation control this is the control section so here it is uh, is essentially the ease of control so the driver gives the vehicle a particular input want the vehicle to respond predictably and to safely and predictably so the driver should sufficient fact he should know what's going on uh, with the tires uh, if the vehicle is above or unstable it should give a warning to the driver so we'll be learning the directional response uh during different maneuvers and here we'll be using this bicycle model primarily so here uh neglecting the track width of the vehicle so we essentially treating the car as a bicycle so we using the we combining the front tires into one here into one um tire here and then the rear tires are here so we'll be doing steady so steady state handling is where um the derivative is zero so things don't change with time um or i should say the accelerations not because you'll have velocities and everything but you won't have a uh, axles here and i uh, will be looking at low speed cornering the your like, vehicle is driven in a parking lot so what happens there things like acumen angle become relevant and then the high speed corner in your tires start generating lateral forces and they start going to slip angles opens and the we'll be talking a lot about understeer so understeer is very important it's used in it's one of the important parameters used to quantify the handle behavior of any vehicle and then we'll be moving on to trans handling and transient handling we'll be talking about primarily runs parameters like our uh, lag times lag times and all that and suspension effects on handling so here we'll be going back to our suspension section and it, this will kind of bridge the two sections so there we talked about you know camber change and then roll moment distribution the steering errors so how those influence handling so how you can control it's known as the understeer budget which is basically a total uh, understeer coming from different components so how to control, uh, each components and consequently how to change the the steer budget and then we got roll over so again there's static or steady state roll over and then transient roll over and how to minimize roll over so any other questions we will stop um, for 2 minutes for questions and then we 
looking at what sort of assignments and projects will be there here. So we'll take some questions now. I think there was one question from uh, Harish. Uh, is there any chance to change efficiency? No, not that one. Uh, so I think uh, there was one more. How MATLAB is used to de in design of FSA powertrain uh, from Rishikesh? Uh, do you want to take it, uh, Karthik? Um, no, powertrain, we wouldn't be doing any course. So this will uh, this will be only vehicle dynamics. So powertrain would be a completely different domain. Uh, engine and transmission design, so we will not be going in that in this course. Okay, thank you. Uh, guys, yeah. uh, if you have any other questions. Uh, um, yeah, prerequisites, we have a separate slide for that. We'll be covering the prerequisites. It's not a lot, actually, but yeah, I have a separate slide for that. And uh, Simulink, no, we will we'll be using a tool called Octave, which is essentially MATLAB syntax. Your MATLAB file will be can be run through Octave. But uh, so that is a public domain tool, is free. But no, we will not be using Simulink here. So this will mostly code based. So Simulink is essentially the block version of uh, MATLAB. Uh, coding knowledge, we so that's again the pre. We'll look at it. Um, it's good to have some coding knowledge, but uh, it's not mandatory. So once we start the course, uh, you can you know you can pick up. So we have some resources and. You can uh, do it. So I think we'll. Uh, yeah, things like slip angle Ackerman. It will take a lot of time to explain. We we go through that in the course. Um, we can. So yeah, it'll. If I start that now, it'll take quite time. Um, Yeah, I think we'll go on. Yeah, we will be looking at some tire data for sure. And um, there'll be real world data, so it'll be really textbook stuff. Yeah, I think we can move on. Yes, uh, uh, you can move on, uh, Karthik. Yeah. yeah, the assignment projects, uh, the assignments, maybe weekly or once in two weeks, there'll be a mix of some conceptual questions. So this will test your you know, basic understanding, just one sentence uh, answers. And then there'll be uh, hand calculations and Excel sheet type of problems. And th this may seem very basic. So, you know, we are always talking about MATLAB and Adams. So you're, it's easy to neglect this, but you should remember that in the industry today, there are a lot of engineers, even like senior or chief engineers, uh, spend a lot of time on hand calculations and then you know basic excel sheet calculations so we should never neglect those sometimes it's you don't matlab or add all your problem and of course sometimes you know the non trees and then things become complex you need matlab or octave so the assignment will be a mix of these three types of problems and the projects so we're thinking about two projects mostly and they will not be textbook problems so it will be based on real world prop, real world engineering issues, real world day. As I said, there'll be some base terms, tutorials or demos. So you'll learn how to build the suspension in atoms. But uh, yeah, we won't be doing a lot of uh, teaching there. But then you appreciate the power of atoms in characterizing the suspension or studying the suspension parameters. Yeah, we'll look at the demo quickly. Uh, I'll just, there are a couple of slides more and we'll look at the demo, Adam's demo. And so how is this course gonna be helpful? So again, this will, um, at the end of this, after those four modules, you'll be able to identify design factors influencing the KNC parameters of performance of the suspension and for mechanisms that happen during Breaking, cornering, so how the suspension reacts to all that, how to control or transfer. And we'll be able to understand the physics that's going on in the tire contact patch and how the forces and moments are generated. And 
uh, some elementary theme models so ride and handling models the half car model water car model you'll be able to build that in octave and then uh, perform some studies to evaluate you know isolation and stability and this will help your planning to work uh, after undergraduate or if you're planning to go for um, go to pursue a math degree this course will be helpful for both that's the way it's designed because uh, we have industry data you know we're working with real world industry data and it will be helpful to people who want to work after this so it'll, and the conceptual questions will help you uh, um, do well in interviews vehicle dynamics interviews and at the same time you know matlab and uh, equations so the tire has a lot of uh, math math involved so that will help you if you want to do master degree because we want to do research in tire behavior that will be a good foundation so so we are trying to you know strike a balance between the two extremes you know industry and research so there'll be real world data as well as a lot of math as well so this prerequisites there are no prerequisites as such but uh, if you're into sae or baha that will really be helpful because you you'll have an understanding of what the suspension and some introductory course in suspension engineering again it's helpful but not required and as i said there will be some maths or differential equations that sort of stuff and then mechanics will be looking at a lot of body diagrams forces moments so these things will be helpful and for coding you can use these uh, resources so we'll send out these links so you can use the these resources to you know download install octave and then there are also a lot of good tutorials so you can um, it will be used subsequently so it's good to know we'll be going through the codes line by line in most of the cases but some of the assignments will be based on this so you have to write your own code and yeah textbooks and other sources for reference so if you want to know about textbooks this fundamentals of vehicle dynamics by gillespie so that's a really good place to start so that is like um it's a small book but all the important concepts are covered not a lot of math and <clears throat> so that's a really good place to start is car vehicle dynamics by milliken so this is considered to be the vehicle dynamics bible by a lot of people so this is a really comprehensive treatment a lot of math equations and concepts as well so this is a very good book but uh, i would suggest starting with something simple like gillespie and it's tuned to win so if you don't if you don't care about math you hate equations but if you're working in um, fsa if you're working for an fsa project you just want to you know make the car as fast as possible so you should use a book like this so tuned to win so this is what i call an at the track practical approach so you don't care about um roll stiffness you don't care about the equation or the math behind it but this book will teach you how to you know tune things for like a subjective and practical approach and this multi body systems approach to vehicle dynamic by blundell and hardy so this will help if you want to do atom modeling so if you if ca interests you this is a extremely well written really i would say these four this is my favorite book because i'm i work in the ca domain so it teaches you how to build adams models from it's not an adams workbook as such but it uh, talks about the concept that so if you want to program a tool then this is a really good starting point this book and internet there's a channel called engineering explain so a lot of questions that you asked today have been explained in that channel and uh, he's a very knowledgeable guy so he did um read in one of the universities in the US and his videos are free um, but again these are all 5 minute videos cannot he won't teach you things like you know coding but basic what the tires doing what the suspension is sort of stuff is really um source and you should also go through a lot of company web pages so i gave you a list of companies so if you go to their web pages they talk about their products and services so you can get a lot of specific information there and there's a magazine called vehicle dynamics international um a lot of technical write ups so this is not your usual magazine not like autocar or something so you have to be an engineer to understand it so it's full of uh, you know 
technical write ups and industry updates so you can even subscribe to this it's free i think it's once in 3 months or something and i would strongly suggest for especially if you say that try to uh, random vehicle dynamics forums i know some, some forums are yeah a lot of people just write what they feel like so yeah like stick to textbooks or some reputed sources like this magazine but, but yeah avoid forums and this is a interesting source that helps a lot of people have um, heard from a lot of and for experienced it personally too so if you play a lot of racing video games um it helps you uh, latest games now they have a lot of tuning options and they work with the automotive industry so we or tire testing company so one of the video games was developed using that testing company so same guys who do work for ford and general motors so there's a lot a decent bit of accuracy um in these racing games so if you tune something you can actually feel it will give you a feel of what uh, those changes have uh, th- those changes have actual track so it's like a simulator i would say and yeah this is the last slide so you can i have my contact details here you can contact me uh my linkedin you can contact me on linkedin or send me an email with any questions that you have and quickly about my background so i work uh with rausch as a senior vehicle dynamics ca engineer so i work primarily with adams and do suspension geometry studies ride and hang simulation and model correlation and also do a lot of python programming so i don't use octave or matlab at work i use python for task task automation and the program i worked on suvs so mid size suvs trick cars and then the google car you you have seen that small autonomous prototype so we worked on that and some heavy trucks as well um i did my bachelor's in ssn ssn college and then a masters degree from university of michigan back in 2012 so yeah you can always feel free to contact me my phone number is here as well so if you send me a message on whatsapp um, feel free to do so um so any questions here so there's only the adams demo remaining so we'll take questions now and then look at that quickly any questions about the course content or free requests or anything so uh, there is one question i will i will uh, take that kartik if yeah, you yeah sure if you know. sure some is uh, about your question on work in companies in and abroad by pursuing this course so the the goal at skilling is to provide very good quality engineering courses that are basically taken in the industries the reason for uh, someone like kartik uh, to take up a course is basically to give you the industrial experience that he has over a period of years so he he has been working in this field for the 5 years and uh, when you kind of understand those experiences you are also basically uh, in this 3 months compressing his 5 years of work experience and learning from him right so that is what you will be getting uh, so we do not promise any job opportunities if you, your question is will like uh, am i going to get a job or am i going to get recruited because i am taking a course on skilling uh, it will be an indirect benefit uh, we have seen a lot of people who take our courses go out and do brilliantly in companies like mercedes benz renault nissan and even get uh, good uh, uh, admits but uh, we we are not selling this course saying hey take this course you will get a job so this is basically you will get real good engineering education that you, you will not get in anywhere in india so that is what we are giving you so uh, and sham list the company doing vehicle dynamic analysis in india like every every oem which produces a car will do vehicle dynamics analysis sham uh any course material or notes printable materials will be po- provided for this courses shantraj s yes, the co- so kartik's presentation the course videos uh then reference material and additional uh, help material will also be provided to you uh okay uh, so i i have i have a couple more questions so what is the duration of this course akash this is a 12 week course three month course work uh, in this whole course work uh, kartik will be covering the topics that he showed so 12 weeks how the course works is every week you will have two classes one on saturday and the other on sunday 
and uh, two classes, uh, one and a half hours long, and for basically 12 weeks, 24, 24 sessions. So uh, we'll, we'll basically explain more about this session. I'll, I'll let uh, Karthik show the demo. Karthik, you can go ahead and show the demo. Okay. Uh, so this is the Adams interface that you're looking at. So this is, um, this is what's called Adams view. So this is not actually meant for uh, vehicle dynamics analysis directly, but you can see that this is a student edition. So we're not, we don't have the full version. So this is uh, more like, so you can download this. I think I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, this is a free version. So we are limited in capabilities, but uh, yeah, so we're looking at, so we're looking at a uh, double wishbone suspension. Um, it's already been, the model's already been built, but um, you can see the various components here. So I'll just quickly go through how the model is built and then do some, run some simulations. Um, so you can see, we'll start from the outside end. So you have the wheel and tire here and you have the knuckle. The knuckle is connected to the upper control arm at this point. So here you have a connection. And similarly at the lower point, the bottom point, it's connected through a ball joint. So you can see, so this is a ball joint. So that's where it's connected to the knuckle, the lower control arm. And here you have the tie rod, sorry. So this yellow link, so that's called the tie rod. So that comes from your steering system. And when you push on the tie rod, it moves the knuckle and it steers the tire. So on the inside end, the tie rod is connected to the rack. So this part here, the pink part, so that slides uh, here. And uh, so if you steer, the steering system is not shown, but there's a rack and pinion would be here. So if you steer, the pinion would push the rack. And once this starts moving, the yellow link will move and it will push on the knuckle and it will steer the tire. And you also have the shock up as here. So again, remember this is not like CAD. So the shape of this link does not mean anything to Adams. So here it's all joints and the hard points. You can see this HP1, HP3. So that's all matter for Adams. So I can I can even uh, hide this part here. It doesn't matter. So this geometry, you can just start with, uh, you can start with no graph at all. So yeah, remember that Adams is not like CAD based, at least for this application. Um, so the shape does not mean anything. So what matters the uh, joints, so you can see joints and bushings. So here we don't have bushings. Again, this is a very lightweight version, but in the real uh, Adams tool, which is called SCAR, you can a lot of bushing props. So here we are just using simple joints. And So we can quickly run a um, simulation. I've already set up the motion. So if you look at it. So this is the input motion. So here, this motion is acting between two points. So one is a moving point and the other is a reference point. And the function is 80 times. It is a travel 80 millimeters, sine 360 T. So we're going to run this simulation for maybe five seconds. So it will give you a sign profile. The suspension will move up and down for 80 millimeters. And this is a displacement input. You can also specify velocity and acceleration inputs. So run this for five seconds. So you can see we'll animate it um, once the solving is complete. So here, looking at it from the front view, you can see that the tire does not go in the pure vertical direction. You can see a lot of camber change, dynamic camber change. Um, so you can see that it's not a pure, it follows an arc, right? So all the links are following an arc. The tire is gaining and losing camber. So it's not a pure up-down motion. And if you look at it from the top view, you can see the toe changes, whether the tire is towing in or towing out.
yeah so you, here you can see the tire steering so if there is zero toe you wouldn't see any portion of the tire here so you see that the suspension is gaining or losing camber and it's uh, um, you know either getting toe in or toe out as it goes in jounce and reform and so visualize this So if we want to plot, so this is a post processor. So whatever we did there, if we want to visualize the graph, because that, that is very helpful more than the animation helps. So set up toe angle here, we don't have camber, but so this is the toe curve. Negative sign would mean uh, toe out in atoms. That's the convention. So negative sign is toe out and this is rebound. The this side. Let me just um, define the axis. So this. Yeah. So positive is compression positive travel is compression and a negative wheel travel is rebound. So here you can see that as the suspension goes and jounce, as it goes in compression, it's gaining toe in. So this is all exaggerated. You'll never get six degrees of toe. It's all we're talking about 0.1, 0.2. But um, this is just, you know, I've set up the hard points to show you the toe effects. Uh, this is just one more thing and then we'll take questions again. So we can always change the parameters. So maybe change the hard point. So this, this is a very sensitive hard point for the toe curve, which is the tie rod inner point. If we make that, if you change the, this is your hard point table. So if you change it by 10 millimeters and then we can run the simulation again. So we can do a lot of design studies. This process can be automated in Atoms. Again, this is not the full power of Atoms. As I said, it's a free version. So all this can be done automatically. So you can see that the curve has changed now. So you can, so initially it's, it was like this, and now we're making it gain more um, toe end and toe goes and jounce and rebound. So we learn how to control the dog, how to uh, make this curve give us understeer or oversteer. So I think there was a question with toe out and oversteer. So yeah, it can give us, toe can give us understeer or oversteer at any side, front or rear. So we'll be looking at how to control the toe curve. Um, and then what this quadrant means. So right now it's in this second and the fourth quadrant so we can make it go to the first and third quadrant so we'll be looking at what changes we have to make in the suspension to you know change the shape of this curve completely so that that's the sort of looking at so we learn the concepts and then we'll come to atoms and then make some hard point changes and study the tire path Yeah, um, you can take questions now. Uh, that's the end of the workshop, so we can answer questions now. Sure. Uh, no, the sure. octave. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yes, yeah, so I think uh, Mithun wanted to see this slide, so the links to the octave tool. And Mithun, uh, Octave is open source, so you can just you, you Google it and uh, you know, download Octave is very simple, so you can just download it. Uh, Akash, uh, we minimize to change in camera. So Akash has a particular question, uh, Karthik. Yeah. Uh, no, to and Cambridge. Change so 
it's not a general it's not like a one answer thing it depends on the application we can minimize or maximize toe chain so we can do because see if we are talking about the front suspension we want a particular effect and we want the exact opposite in the rear suspension and so it depends whether you want understeer or oversteer and whether you want it to come from the front suspension or the rear suspension uh, so i would say more than minimize or maximize we can tune the toe change and camber change but yeah both will have an effect on understeer oversteer and consequent will affect stability but um, yeah I, we cannot you know say uh, generally well need to minimize or maximize so it's more tuning depending on the type of suspension and the target that we need to achieve